This is exciting, the startup competition, uh, a first for us. Uh, you all are familiar with Shark Tank, and uh, I'll tell you that the parallel here is that the judges who will be at the front table are also investors, very successful investors. So this is especially interesting to us to say, who's got a great idea and who wants to do something with it? So we're very excited to uh, bring this to the stage. And at this point, you don't have to keep listening to me. I'm gonna bring Kathy Robertson up to the stage. And don't forget, the event app should be open on your phone because you get to vote on the best of the six companies as well. We have a winner that's gonna be chosen by the five judges. And I'm looking for their picture up on the screen, the judges. Uh, five judges, six companies, one winner. Second is the people's choice, all of you in the room and all of you in the hall uh, that can come back in. I, um, they don't all have microphones, so I think I need to just do a quick introduction and mention that our startup pitch competition judges, uh, Alex Rodine, it says ATDC, that's part of Georgia Tech. Uh, Alex's ex experience include being involved in the logistics sector uh, and recently sold his company to Geotis and uh, participates here today. Uh, next on that page is Sender Seamus, uh, CEO of GoTRG. Uh, everyone should know Sender, and if you don't, get to know Sender. He's, uh, he's one of our industry thought leaders. Stephen John is here with us from HCG Holdings, um, also uh, an investor, also running other events around the world, including things like Mobile Disrupt and others. Uh, a, a new member, a great investor, great judge. Robert Eccles, longtime friend and colleague. Uh, if you don't know Robert Eccles, he was involved in the Bargain Hunt stores uh, in the uh, early, late 90s, early 2000s, and it grew to over uh, 90 locations in the Midwest secondary retailer. And then Sylvie Thompson is there to keep the rest of them honest. Sylvie is NTT Data. I hope you got to hear her in the industry roundtable on Tuesday. NTT Data, which now is uh, owner of Chainalytics. Uh, they are amazing at the amount of research that they collect, and they're giving us some of that information that relates to the returns and reverse logistics. One more, uh, <coughs> one more bonus for the winners. Uh, IDX TV out here. We'll have them interview with IDX TV. They've been our partner for our media uh, presence, and they've been doing interviews with many uh, of you who are the thought leaders, but we'll take the winners and we'll take them out there and Madison and the team at uh, IDX will interview them and promote them on social media. Good morning and welcome to um, the RLA's first uh, pitch contest. Super excited about this and I appreciate y'all attending this. So as audience participants, y'all are going to be deciding on one of the awards, like Tony said. So as soon as that's available, start voting. We'll announce the winners around, I believe, 1.30 or so, I think the next raffle. So how is it going to work? So each contestant, <clears throat> excuse me, and I have a Las Vegas cold, I think. Um, each contestant's going to have five minutes to pitch. And after each pitch, the judges down here are gonna rate each one based on um, 10 agreed criteria items uh, that we all agreed upon prior to this. And then once all the contestants have pitched, again, we'll open up the voting uh, for the audience uh, winner. <clears throat> uh, the voting's gonna end around noon. So you've got a little bit, but I advise you to vote as soon as you can. Um, then Tony's going to announce the winners. Uh, again, there's going to be a judge's award, and that winner will receive a one-year RLA bronze membership. The audience award um, will receive a one-year RLA copper membership. And in addition, the winners will also receive an exclusive interview in our bi-monthly magazine. So yay, I'll get to I'm looking forward to that because I get to write that article. And let's see, we've already um, introduced the judges. So again, thank you so much for agreeing to be the judges here. 
really appreciate that. So with that, what we're going to do is we're going to have them come uh, in alphabetical order. So our final one is Tompkins Robotics. Thank you. My name is Sean O'Farrell. I'm a vice president with Tompkins Robotics. Uh, I just wanted to clarify a few things. Our parent company, our original parent company, is Tompkins International. They're a consulting company that's been around for coming up on 50 years now. They do a lot of global uh, consulting and studies to different retailers and things like that. So, uh, so we were formed in 2017 uh, with our T-Sort robot uh, as the flagship solution that we use in a lot of different projects. Uh, the, some of the principal founders and the principals within the company now are uh, people that came from the consulting side, 30 years worth of experience, so we have a lot of knowledge uh, within the company from uh, doing uh, consulting efforts on the retailing supply chain side, but also on the return side. Uh, over 200 projects uh, globally, 20,000 robots uh, in operation. Uh, in the past year, we've doubled the revenue and the employee headcount uh, with our company. Uh, the same thing we did the year before that. So uh, we're getting a lot of traction. Uh, we've, uh, some of the projects that we've done in returns handling is uh, only four at this time, but they're handling products like uh, apparel, electronics, general merchandise, health and beauty aids, uh, and phone accessories. Uh, but we've uh, handled a lot of other different things and uh, thinking of it as more of order fulfillment. So when we look at talking about the T-Sort robot, uh, we look at it as handling units or parcels. Uh, our system. So what are some of the pain points in the returns uh, industry at this point uh, besides 3.4 percent unemployment? Uh, that is really the, the main driver for a lot of this. So uh, it used to be when I, I've been in the industry for a long time, so uh, you used to have automation to replace people. Now you're using automation to complement uh, what you have within your workforce. So pain points, excessive floor space, staging of the equipment that comes in, having to process it quickly, there's lack of orderly, orderliness and structure within that uh, building or warehouse. Uh, accuracy is a key thing, uh, not only having a return that is only worth about 15 cents uh, on the dollar, uh, not being able to find that return is a big challenge. Very slow throughput or cycle time to be able to process that return in the way you want to do it. Excessive handling, long cycle time to re-enter back into inventory. Quality, the fewer touches you have, the better quality it maintains within the product. Uh, growth pains and older infrastructure. So a lot of the companies in this building today, a lot of them are startup with less than 10 years. They might be looking at moving from their facility into a larger facility, but that's a big uh, economic effort uh, to do something like that. So our technology helps complement those older buildings that may be uh, challenging. They need to grow, but you don't have to add on to the side of the building or uh, move into another building. So we can prolong the life of that building for you. Uh, inflexible operations, and then of course, uh, no automation within the operation or slow to automate. So in the industry, you've got a lot of the, either the big players, which are a handful or two that are using automation for a high level of returns, but I'm thinking about all those other companies out there that needed to get in the game to help complement or offset the, the loss or, or inability to find labor, uh, and then just being cost effective and competitive against the other players out there. So what's the benefits of the T-Sort? You may have seen some of the robots running over in booth 818, right next to the startup center. Uh, our robots is just an example of what we have uh, to draw people into the booth, but it's a very small footprint. Uh, it operates on multiple table levels. Uh, we have five different size models of T-Sort robots that can handle your product. Uh, it helps demand orderliness within the operation, uh, increases the accuracy. It's very fast, it reduces the handling. And the most importantly, it, it's a quick re-entry into your inventory or to your customer's inventory so that could be sold again uh, quickly. Uh, and maintain the quality, sustain or grow the existing building, as I mentioned before. And the neat thing is, is that our system is on casters and that uh, benefits a lot of customers, especially when you don't have an engineering department or a maintenance department and you want to do some level of automation. Our equipment, with all of it being on, on wheels or casters, is considered um, furniture, so there's no requirements for fire protection, there's no permitting required, and we use standard electrical, so there's no hard wiring of, uh, of electrical or fastening it to the floor. So a simple animation to kind of uh, communicate what our, our system is doing. Uh, the induction points for the system is at the far northwest corner up here. There are two induction points. This is for manual induction. 
And this is a two-table system, which you may not be able to depict. In this example, which is our most common example, uh, robots will queue up at the induct stations. They uh, will pick up, they, they, the product is scanned, or it can be scanned by a, a barcode standing by on a, a sheet of paper. Uh, and then the robot will go down and then sort that product, tilt it, their tray up, sort it into a tote or a shipping carton or into a Gaylord uh, or into a conveyor lane, whatever it might be. So very important, very small footprint, multiple levels, um, no engineering or maintenance needed, as I mentioned before, increased accuracy, easy to expand or repurpose, which a lot of companies like, especially from a 3PL perspective. So if you have multiple customers or clients within your building, and they usually like to keep their inventory separate, the one thing you could do is you can actually use uh, the system in the morning for customer ABC, and then in the afternoon you can use the same system for customer XYZ. So uh, very flexible. Or you can move it to the other side of the building if you lose the contract uh, for that customer. Very low risk, uh, point of entry into automation. That's really key, and I've got a slide coming up on that. Uh, and we have different sized robots to offer. But then I highlight it, robots as a service. There's, here's where your, your low risk really comes in, right? You're a startup company, you're small, or you're waiting to get some more business, uh, you can start out with the robots as a service and just grow as needed, uh, as we do with the retailers with the holiday industry or their peaks are, are uh, much higher than their averages. The peak to average ratio is usually really high over two months period. We can add or complement additional robots within the system. Uh, some of our growth plans, uh, our three-year growth plan, we plan on growing by 200%. Uh, half of our systems sold are with partners or integrators. Uh, I'm depicting an image up here of an ASR system that's called an Automated Storage Retrieval System by AutoStore. That is getting a lot of traction in the industry for being a uh, kind of revolu revolutionary type of automation that's available uh, to store product. On one side you have receiving and they put the product into totes right here, and then the totes come down into these workstations right along here. Uh, and that person that manages a port or a workstation for the storage and inventory will grab an item out of there and put them onto the robots. And so that person can induct at upwards to 1,000 uh, inducts per person per hour. So in your operation, we, might, we could be able to uh, achieve uh, 10 times faster uh, order processing with your operation. Uh, we are increasing the inter uh, greater partnerships. We plan on opening uh, a European office, and uh, we're continuing to grow our patents and intellectual t uh, property. Risk competition, economic downturn, war, uh, and not moving fast enough for our customers, because our customers are moving extremely fast. Uh, market opportunity, uh, this is kind of my key selling point, is 20,000 warehouses in the United States. They say up to 10% of those are automated in some way or fashion. That could be just voice picking, but uh, with conveyor systems and things like that. Uh, I think about all those other companies out there that need to get in the game, can't find the labor, and they need to automate and do things faster and more accurately. So I got a wrong number on there. I said 1,800, or excuse me, it should be uh, 18,000 warehouses time, times uh, 1 million. It's an 18 billion uh, opportunity for the marketplace. And that completes it for me. My, again, my name is Sean O'Farrell. Any questions or if you'd like to see a demonstration, booth 818 uh, over on the right-hand side. Thank you.